SAG joins the WGA, shutting down Hollywood entirely. The Emmy nominations are out, but will it even matter? And stick around to the end of the episode to hear our review of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. All this on the Movie Mob Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Movie Mob Podcast, episode 57 here in studio. RJ, Matt, Nick behind the camera. We got a lot to talk about today, a lot of great topics. We're reviewing Mission Impossible at the end of the episode. But before we get into that, we got some major news out of Hollywood here. Another strike. SAG, the Screen Actors Guild, has now joined the WGA in striking against the producers um, for a multitude of reasons. Uh... Pay, obviously, residuals, and a new one that popped up in the possibility of AI scanning um, and using actors for their uh, their faces for uh, some low pay. Uh, and it, it's a scary possibility, but obviously they're fighting it. Nick, you put out a video the other day going deep into it. Yeah, You know deep. a lot more than me. You've looked into this, so I'll let you kind of give a little synopsis of what's going on here. Yeah, so um, WGA has been on strike since May 2nd, um, and that shut down part of Hollywood and some productions. Uh, but they in the during the negotiations, they the producers asked for a 12 day extension um, because they can do that. So they give I think they give like uh, 30 days and then they they can ask for up to 15 more days of an extension. So they have a total of 45 days to, to negotiate contracts mm-hmm. between SAG and, and the producers. But they asked for a 12 day extension and during that 12 days did nothing to negotiate. They just pushed Barbie. Um, and they pushed Mission Impossible, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they pushed some of these big summer uh, Hollywood and a films. ton of trailers dropped like the day before. Absolutely, hundred yeah. um, percent. And then, so because they didn't come back to the table, they said, "Okay, well, if you're not going to give us anything, then we're just going to go on strike." Mm-hmm. Um, what they're striking, or what the negotiations are about right now, is the residuals. So, because of streaming services like Netflix and Hulu and all these places, right? All their all of their contracts are based around cable TV and uh, Reruns, Hollywood right. box office hits. So all of this changed during COVID. It, streaming services are not new. Netflix has been around for a, a better part of a decade, almost two decades, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But the problem is that during COVID, when Warner Brothers and all these places started dropping stuff on HBO as opposed to in theaters, all these residuals started dropping. People stopped going to the theaters, and everyone is now st- streaming all of their shows and mm-hmm. everything. So where residuals used to be able to be calculated based on analytics, the streaming services are third party. So you have, so just to break it down into simple terms, you have like Warner Brothers, let's say it's not just Warner Brothers, it's Universal, Warner Brothers, Disney, all these places, but you have Warner Brothers and then you have HBO Max, which is a separate entity. Max. Excuse me. You have Max, Mm -hmm. which is a separate entity. So Warner Brothers makes a movie, pays all their actors, writers, crew members, everything. And then residuals are payments that get made every time that the show gets streamed on cable. It's uh, like uh, Jerry Seinfeld making a million when Seinfeld gets Exactly, 100%. But Jerry Seinfeld is not getting paid nearly as much when it's streamed on Netflix. Right. Because Netflix, as a third-party company, is not providing the information of Mm -hmm. the analytics of how many times things are being watched, which episodes, and so on. Mm -hmm. So instead of making, like one writer said during the the strike that... um, uh, they got a check from a cable TV show that they were writing on that they had resi- a residual check came in for $12,000. And then they had another um, check that came in from a streaming TV show that they did for $4. Mm-hmm. So there's, it's not like, that's a like difference. nobody can actually live off $4. $12,000 is a lot of money. I yeah, get yeah, it, yeah. whatever. And people are like, oh, it's Hollywood. These people make so much money. But nobody's going to be able to eat off of $4, let alone support a family. And it's also the very top percentage who are actually making the thousands in terms of sure. that, too. Sure. Right. So then you have tons of people that are like um, assistant writers, interns, all these people that are getting residual checks for like three cents. Like nothing. Like yeah. literally nothing. No money. And um, so that's that's one thing. On the actor side of things, because that's all WGA, but on the actor side of things, they're complaining about the fact... <sighs> Some Here of it goes. Yeah, well, no, some of it's <laughs> fucking really annoys me, man. Mm-hmm. Because they, I feel like there's always a big issue, right? And it doesn't matter if it's like political in the government or it's it's like something like this or whatever. There is something to be said about the fact that they wanted to take background actors 
right? So you yeah. and I are main characters in a movie, and Matt's going to be a background actor. There he is. Normally, a background, and there are some people that are professional background actors. Yeah. They like it's what they they just want to be a part of Hollywood, and they want to go like not everybody's trying to mm-hmm. be, you know, Robert De Niro. You yeah. know what I mean? So like. But these people would go in and they would get like a thousand dollars a day, whatever the or seven oh three or whatever the, the mm-hmm. main like the SAG minimum is. And so this AMPTP, the producers guild, right? Mm-hmm. They were saying, Okay, Matt, you're gonna come in for a day, for one day, you're gonna stand inside a booth similar to like what they have at the airport. We're gonna scan you, right, in costume, but then we're gonna be able to use your image. For every movie moving forward in the background of any movie we want, you're going to be a CG version of yourself, photo scanned, that we're going to use. But you only get paid for one day when you first come in to do that initial scan. Mm. That, that, to me, is fucking asinine. And and how could they think anyone would ever agree to that either? Because they try. I guarantee you it was on page 986 of the negotiations. Mm -hmm. And thank God SAG was like, whoa, what the fuck That's is this? That's why you got to get a lawyer. 100%. Better call bunch of Saul them. Goodman. Yep. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. But they try and sneak this shit in there. Here's my problem with SAG, though, is yeah. that on top of this, they they throw in all this stuff like we shouldn't be doing self-tapes and everything else, mm-hmm. you know, because we don't have access to well, cameras. It, it's kind of like not, not to get me, political, bro. I mean, but it's kind of like when Congress on both sides will throw random saying. stuff in. Like, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So it's like there's no one who's like 100% correct here. Mm-hmm. and there, But like... The thing that sucks the worst about the situation is that everyone who is involved in this industry in Hollywood, and I mean like the sound people, the lighting people, the 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 set builders, right? Like editors, all of these people that are not part of these two unions are still not working yeah, they still currently. Suffer from it, yeah, because these people can't come to any sort of agreement because everybody's acting like a big baby about the whole thing. Yeah, and I'm, it's really fucking annoying. I mean, you had mentioned it on your video that you put out. Which if you want to see of, me rant about yeah, shit, I'll put a link to my. One video of the, the things that does bother me about it is what you said about them not allowing non-SAG members to work. So it's not that they're not allowing it. Or they're just, they're saying, you're, you're kind of blacklisting Oh, them. dude, there's, yeah, yeah. there's videos. Which is kind of like. There are YouTubers yeah. who are members of SAG, and YouTube is not included in the, sure. in the thing. Like, you, if you're a YouTuber, you're a YouTuber, mm-hmm. whatever. But, like, um, there, I was watching people's reaction to the SAG strike or trying to explain it, SAG members explaining the SAG strike mm-hmm. and all this other stuff, right? And they were saying, like, if you're not a member of SAG but you're an actor, like, don't go be in a movie right now because... You know, you, you're, what you should do is go pick it with us and stand with us yeah. and everything else. Or you'll be blacklisted and it's a really bad thing. Why would you say that to somebody? Like, just because you are part, go, like, be a part of your union. Like, that's mm-hmm. fine. You do you. But some of these people are like, just, they're just trying, trying to, to break live, into yeah. an industry. I mean, Jessica Chastain said 87% of SAG members make like under 26000 a year. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But bro, on top of that, like not to go on and on, but this is like a really touchy thing. And part of the reason it's so touchy to me is because usually like our sets mm-hmm. are non-union sets. You know, yeah. if I want to grab the camera guy, walk down the street to get a shot of the whatever, like we can do that. On a, on a SAG uh, set, they set the rules for like stand-ins and like how many people you have to have on set. And it's all for like good reason. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to overwork people 15 hours a day and everything else. I get it. Yeah. But once you join SAG, nobody, like Savino, the, if they're members of SAG, they couldn't have been in your movie or they'd get kicked out of SAG because mm-hmm. it's not a SAG set. Yeah, so yeah. I've like had actor friends be in movies that I've made that then cannot be in future films once they join SAG. And so now they really can't do anything. Like they literally, all they can do right now is pick it. They can't be in yeah. indie films. They can't be in student films. They can't be in anything unless it's SAG regulated, mm-hmm. which is, which is, Really scary because while they're striking, it's all for the cause, but no bills get paid. Yeah. So you better have a savings if you're going on strike is what I'm saying. I think the scariest thing, because it connects to the writers too, is the whole thing of AI. Yeah, The executives wanted to use AI for writer for scripts and now them using it for actors. Matt, what do you think about that scan in someone's face? Yeah, no, I don't like it. No. Did that that make sense? Did I I explain it? Yeah, it made perfect sense. I mean, I I agree with Bill Burr. I think we should have stopped technology after the 90s. It should be like Dune. We revert. Yeah, we revert. Yeah. No, I, I think that's, I mean, that's stupid, though, because you're taking away uh, money from the workers. You know what I mean? Yeah. People need work, and, you know, instead of going in 17 days, you go on one, you get paid for mm-hmm. one day. You know, which Forever, sucks. though. Forever. Yeah, no, that, yeah. Forever. No, it sucks. And I, I, I mean, I don't like AI. Um, you know who hates AI? 
Ethan Hunt. Yeah, Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. the entity. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I mean, listen. I mean, no, this is not good. Yeah. Listen, the fans suffer. Mm-hmm. You know, the actors. Everyone. Yeah. No one wins. No one wins. You know what I mean? Except the executives. They so, get more uh, money in their pockets. Yeah. So it sucks, and hopefully it uh, gets resolved. Well, soon. this relates to yeah. other things that we've been talking about too, on a, on a more generic scale. Okay, mm-hmm. hear me out. But we've talked a lot on this show about Star Wars and mm-hmm. how they've just beat the piss out of yeah. it and everything else. And it's like every time you try and cut corners. The only thing that suffers, or the, the things that suffer, are the quality, the fan like yeah. f- experience, like the viewer experience, and everything else. So you can have a bunch of AI people in the background, or you can. Have, they were saying the, the writers were saying that like, you know, th- like one of the things with the writer strike is that they don't want AI to write scripts or do rewrites and yeah. things like that. And obviously, like right now, computers can't do it. And in the future, I'm sure maybe it could be an issue. So they're trying to nip it in mm-hmm. the bud. I get it, but like, bro. Like it's gonna be crap eventually. Yeah. And this whole the whole industry is gonna fall apart. I mean, it's gonna be, get to a point where it's like too late to come back from it, you know. But you're trying to get people to go back to a theater, mm-hmm. and instead of putting out more movies like Oppenheimer and uh, Mission Impossible: Dead mm-hmm. Reckoning and everything else, they're negotiating on ways to like, well, maybe a computer can do it for us and it'll save us money. Well, it's the disconnect which has always been there between studio executives who, you know, are business people yes. and then yes. the people under them who are creatives and yeah. there's never going to have that same thing unfortunately yeah um i think tom cruise i know we can talk about him a lot oh, but tom he kind of tries to tread that line a bit mm. but where he is, wants this, the movies to make money he wants people to go to theaters but he also wants the best quality to come out yeah yeah i 100 percent agree yeah. and just saying like because we've had this conversation before like when i first met you years mm. ago now um like I used to live in LA and then we moved back home to Massachusetts. And after high school, I didn't move back out to LA and there's nothing wrong with LA as a place. Well, there's a lot wrong with LA actually right now, but that's a whole other story. Um, but my part of the reason that I don't want to be out there is because I don't want to work for one of these major studios. I really truly believe in independent creative stuff. I don't want to be hindered by, whatever the regular FCC regulation, this and that and whatever else, or what's in right now or what's, I want to make movies that are, that are artistic in the way that like you want to write them and that mm-hmm. we want to make them and like stuff that like, well, that's not in right now. So we're not making like, no, dude, I just want to make our movies. Like I yeah, want to yeah, make yeah. cool stuff that matters to us. Mm-hmm. You, does that make sense? Yeah. And I was just saying earlier that, uh, SAG did approve of some independent, yes, a list of independent movies that are moving forward with SAG actors. Like Anne Hathaway was in one, so there will be stuff being made, but not from those big studios. Yeah, I would much rather be come as a company. I would much rather become like an A twenty four than a Warner Brothers. Sure, you know, what but I mean? uh, sooner than later, A twenty four is going to be bought out by one of those people. I'm sure. Potentially, they yeah. might. You know, I don't know. We'll uh, one thing I will say is crazy. Since next week we're doing a special Oppenheimer mm-hmm. episode, mm-hmm. that the strike was announced during on the day during the premiere oh, of yeah, yeah, Oppenheimer, yeah. and crazy. Matt Damon, Killian Murphy, Cillian Killian, what is Killian. it? Killian Murphy and other actor members. They got up during the premiere. They got a notification. Got up during the premiere of their own movie and walked out of the yeah. theater. It's, it's pretty crazy. Dude. When you're on strike, crazy. it's that's over. Insane. Yeah, they didn't get to finish the movie. That's a shame. Yeah. What are you gonna do? I'm sure they've seen it. I'm sure they've seen Christopher all of it. Nolan's <laughs> chilling though because he's in the DGA. And no they one. struck a deal immediately. I know. Well, because they care about directors no and they don't care about anyone else. But no yeah, it's, um, insane. it's insane, man. Anyway, connected to this, we have the Emmy nominations came mm. out. Now, just like the Oscars, I think the you know, we all have the same opinion. It, it's not the law. You no. know, because they said something wins best drama doesn't mean it really is. And there's always, it's a popularity contest. How could you argue with that? But it is still <laughs> fun to get together and talk about a lot of the great stuff that has come out. Sure. And we get some great nominees. Now, listen, we, we'd be here till next week if we went through every single category here. So I took the, the drama, mostly the drama categories we'll Which talk about. Which is what about. we talk about on here mostly anyway. Yeah, and it's all stuff that we've seen. So... Let's just dive into it. And, and why it's connected to the strike is I don't oh. think anyone can be at the Emmys, right? Well, so if the strike continues, people who are at the Emmy or people like who are nominated, mm-hmm. who would go to the Emmys, are not allowed to go. But they're also, RJ, not allowed. So actors get nominated. And then in between the actual Emmy mm-hmm. award ceremony and the nomination, like yeah. that time, they campaign to oh, these people gotcha. who vote. And they say, oh, vote for me and all this yeah. stuff to the people that pick them. They're not allowed to do that either. That might be good because then people will finally just choose what they actually think is 
Maybe. They should, yeah. they should Maybe. postpone. Yeah. Because I feel like you watch an award show. Half of half of the reason you watch is to see who wins. The other half is to see all the stars yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what People I mean? like the red carpet. You want to see yeah. Pe- Pedro Pascal wins. You want to see him go up in a suit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he looks, see what he has to say. That's mm-hmm. half the reason you watch. Yeah. So I think they should like postpone because if they have a show and they just announce the winners... Dude, I was just checking my phone the next day. Why? Yeah, why? Right. Why would I even yeah. watch? Well, this is what was. You know? This is what the Oscars was like in 2020 during yeah, COVID yeah, yeah. when stupid. they shut everything down, mm-hmm. and then yeah. they, they literally did like Zoom calls for the Oscars. Like, who mm-hmm. the fuck wants to watch that shit? Yeah, yeah. I'm not, and I'm staying up till man, I'll check my yeah. phone the next morning to see what won. Let's be honest, award shows in general are bullshit. Yeah, like, you it's check all your shit phone the next anyway. Day. Yeah, but it's kind of like kind of well, interesting fun. for us. It was an well, excuse because you yeah. get to kind of in a celebrate in a way all the stuff that's come out that year, and you get to like see if the show that you really loved like wins something. Yeah. and then you're like fuck yeah, yeah you're like, happy super for that cool. crew and the, but I yeah. don't want to watch the show if it's just going to be like like yeah. that's like let's just get a notification yeah. on my just, phone yeah if it's just on. me reading off the crown you know what I mean yeah <laughs> you know the fuck <laughs> you know exactly well, well, let's ahead, get into RJ. them though because yeah, we have some really interesting this is loaded. stuff here this is loaded and I know right. none of this shit yeah so this oh is really drama series I don't watch this Andor how about this? This is kind of monumental. Yeah, it's all right. The Let's first off here for a minute. These are, in, these are in alphabetical order, you mother. But it's monumental. It's first, it, okay. I, I'm just going to say, I think it's well-deserved. It's a good show. It's well-deserved. It's season um, TV. Better Call Saul. Obviously, obviously, it's final season. The Crown. Have not seen it. Oh, I've, I've watched all I've of it. Very great good. stuff. House of the Dragon. Of course. No question. Stay the Last of Us. Succession. Well, now we're going down the HBO line here. Oh. The White Lotus, season two. And then Yellow Jackets, which I've heard great things of. It's a Showtime show. It's the only one I haven't seen other than The Crown. But uh, who do you got here? What do you think? I mean, dude, this is a stacked category. I can't it's believe tough. I've actually seen most. The only ones I haven't seen, Succession, Yellow Jackets, and Crown. Yeah. But I hear good things about all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I got to go House of the Dragon. Really? I, I think that's... Over oh, wow. White Lotus with, with Lucia and... I, I think the three... For me, of what I've seen, you guys seen Succession, so mm-hmm. you know you talk about that. But for me, it's between House of the Dragon, Saw, and Lotus. Yep, I think it's got to be one of those three. <sighs> I don't know, dude. It's so tough. I, mm-hmm. I like House of the Dragon. He's going House of the Dragon, but like, do you know what I mean? But I think any of those. It three did. Would be I think deserved. it won the Golden Globe. House of the Dragon. I just love that universe, man. Yeah. Westeros, so that's why I'm going. But any of those would be. I mean, for me, it's a two man race between Better Call Saul and Succession because mm. they're both. It was their final season. Sometimes they like to award them during that. I- I'm going Succession. I think that's going to win, but I would not be surprised. But Better Call Saul's gotten really gypped in the Emmys. I don't think it's won an Emmy, Fuck. which is ridiculous. Yeah, I think amazing. I think part of the reason for that HBO. Well, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah, go no, go. Oh well, I think the part of the reason that. Shows like Better Call Saul have been getting gypped recently um, is because people are streaming more. And not mm-hmm. that it's not a streamed thing, but in the earlier seasons, because it was on cable and it, like you can't And you have say to wait a year for it to go on Netflix, Better Call Saul. After yeah, it just ends. dropped yeah. on Netflix. Like yeah, I've watched ago. all of Better Call Saul, yeah. but I haven't watched the last season because it's not on yeah. there yet, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say that when you have, when you can have more intense storylines like succession that yeah. succession could never be on cable let's be honest no, here, no. okay and i wouldn't watch the censored version that yeah, they put on a and e in 10 years anyway it's gonna be crap yeah but like you know because the writing is really what makes that show mm-hmm. but um but that's probably why better call Saul. i haven't seen andor or anything like that um do you want to go first before no I, i'm going succession what do you got oh okay well so is it like who do i think is gonna win or who do i want to win i'm thinking who i think Okay, I think Succession's going to win. Yeah. I want White Lotus to oh, win. Oh, really? I love okay. that was, um, that it. It won season. last year, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So if it won last year, then... But I think Succession will win only because it was its last season. Yeah. So it'll be like a big send-off for, like, exactly. for, and it's for Brian Cox and everything yeah. else. Um, the Crown is very good. I it, It's not... I heard this last season wasn't that good. It was. It's the mo- like. So it's it's funny, right? So like the the crown season one takes place during World War Two, and and when the queen becomes queen, mm. the crown season two is like there's there's more drama there with like Margaret Thatcher or whatever it is, and the crown season three is like young Charles, young Diana, like mm. nothing really happens. Princess Diana, and it it ends the crown season three. It's all like this. I'm not ruining anything because it's like based on a real. It's based on the people. Sure. So, but the time frame wise, it ends before Diana's death. So there's no oh. big finale or anything like that. Oh, that's... That'll be like the next season. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like it's like, eh. but the acting, I will say, on the part of the lady who plays, uh, it's Emily, um, or not Emily. What's her name? What's the lady who plays the queen in Crown season three? Uh, is it Umbridge? It is Umbridge in season three. I'm talking th- season two was better. 
Season, oh, Olivia, season, Olivia Coleman. Olivia Coleman played the. She's my favorite queen so far. Mm-hmm. Although the young queen was really, she was she was great as well. Um, this is interesting. I didn't realize this. White Lotus didn't win. Succession won last year. Best drama. That's so maybe, interesting. Yeah. So I don't know. Lotus. Will they do it two years in a row? I don't know. Lotus. Well, it, but the, see, the thing is, when it's the last season, sometimes yeah. they do this stuff. But Better Call Saul is the last season too. I wish we were doing this show back when The Sopranos was on. They won so many Emmys, dude. It was mm-hmm. so cool. Well, I wouldn't have been able to speak. No, I, I hear you, but yeah. I, well, and I was five, dude. So yeah. like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> but uh, the um, like watching. James Gandolfini get up there and give his acceptance speeches or like Eddie yeah. Falco and them like that's so cool, dude. It's mm-hmm. so cool. Um, yeah, no. So anyway, I think I I really loved season two of White Lotus, but I, it, you're right, it might need a yeah. little bit extra. Um, can we talk about the fact? Well, we'll talk about it after. Well, let's yeah. let's keep going. Let's keep going. Best actor in a drama: Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul, Brian Cox, Succession, Jeff Bridges, The Old Man. Jeremy Strong, Succession, Karen Culkin, Succession, and Pedro Pascal, The Last of Us. Have not seen The Old Man, but I've also heard good things about that. We love Jeff Bridges. Um, I- I'm going Odin Kirk. I think it's he's got to win this. Come on. He dude, deserves dude, it. Dude, he's been carrying that show yeah. for how long now? Mm-hmm. Dude, I, it's the last season, and I think the Succession thing might hurt him. You get three from the same show. Yeah. It's you a lot of I mean? noms. Uh, I'd go Odin Kirk. Yeah. I think he deserves it, man. And he plays that character perfectly. Yeah. I, I'd go Odin Kirk. I mean, I don't think Brian Cox was in this season enough to warrant him winning. Uh, I think Karen Culkin definitely has a chance. I would give him number two, maybe. But, what do you but think? But RJ, Jeremy Strong lived as the character. Yeah, sure. He was he yeah. was No, but Karen Culkin during it, he had a I'm, lot of I'm buzz. Kidding. Yeah. I what do you think? Um, yeah, I would say either Kieran or Jeremy. I, I wasn't really I'm not a fan of, of The Last of Us in general, mm-hmm. um, and I haven't seen Better Call Saul, but it's just like, eh, to me. I thought you've seen um, Better Call Saul. I haven't seen the, I just oh, said I haven't oh, seen the last season. It's not on Netflix. Oh, yeah. I don't have cable, so yeah, I'm not wasting my money on that. Anti-breaking bad. This guy. I'm not anti. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm anti-cable. Little, yeah. I'm pro sure. HBO. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm pro freedom of speech, okay? Yeah. That's what I'm pro. <laughs> so You're never going to convince Goodman. me that a lawyer, yeah. a shady lawyer and drug dealers don't say the F word. It's not going to happen for me. I'm sorry. Issue. Never going to convince me of that. No, I would say, but Kieran Culkin had a, had a really standout role this season. I think Jeremy Strong, especially when, uh, you know, stuff goes down, mm-hmm. certain things. If you haven't seen the season, I won't ruin it. Um, but like just his, um, the emotional, the height of yeah. the emotion and everything was, was really good. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, I would say, okay, fine, fine. If you want my top three, it'd be Jeremy, Karen, and Bob. Okay. Okay. So I'm you're not going giving, Jeremy, I'm not, Yeah, I'm not one. giving it to Pedro. I'm sorry. Best actress in a drama series. Bella Ramsey, The Last of Us. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moss, The Handmaid's Tale. Kerry Russell, The Diplomat. Have not seen that. My mom watched it. Melanie Linsky. She's from uh, Two and a Half Men. I didn't like her character in The Last of Us. Oh, Rose. Yeah, Sarah Snook, Succession, and Sharon Horgan and Bad Sisters. I haven't heard of that show. Um, I, I'm going Sarah Snook. I, I think I think I'm going. Yeah, I think it's a clear win. What do you think, Matt? Well, RJ, uh, I've only seen one of these. Yeah, these are. Yeah, I've only seen Bella Ramsey in The Last of Us, mm-hmm. and she was great. Okay, so I'll go her. Giving it to the young That's, buck. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. fair. Bella yeah. Ramsey did do phenomenal work. Sarah mm-hmm. Snook is standout. Um, yeah. I actually did watch a little bit of The Diplomat. Mm-hmm. Nah. No, nah, not for nah, you. it's on Netflix. It's like, hey, hey. oh no, it's on HBO. I think, but it's like, ugh, I like Terry Russell like, though. She's she's political. Yeah, but I like political dramas and yeah. stuff. But it's like, bleh. I'd yeah. rather watch House of Cards. Fair. I cannot believe I just got a bitch for a second. I cannot believe that Handmaid's Tale is. It's got to be in season twenty-five. Like, what are we doing I know, here? It's still going. Handmaid's Tale yeah. is still a thing. Yeah. Come yeah. on, in high school man. that was like, I right. remember that blew up. It was big for the first few mm-hmm. seasons, and just like everything else, Matt, they beat the ever eleven like, piss out of it. That was like six, seven years ago. I remember hearing about that. I think it's a good show, but it makes me really uncomfortable and I, I it's just too dark for yeah, me. I, haven't, I haven't watched it yeah I, yeah I i never had an issue with with the with the subject matter because it's like it's I don't just know, like you, i'm never in the mood to watch it it's yeah. like, <laughs> like I don't, well i'm always yeah. i'm constantly depressed yeah, yeah, yeah. so what are you gonna do no no but i uh <laughs> but um i just can't believe that it's gone it's it's getting to be like um walking dead at yeah, this yeah, point yeah. like it's just too much yeah. dude it's you know it's it's a little crazy who are you know. going with sarah snook Say, oh all day yeah all sarah right. snook she all did right. dude sarah and snook. she was pregnant too Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, blow me. I don't know. Right. I don't think that really matters, dude. You know, yeah. I, listen, she I was either, but. she was pregnant. She did a great job. I'm not saying that it doesn't matter. I'm sure they're working conditions, whatever. But I'm just saying performance-wise, she mm-hmm. was phenomenal, yeah. dude. She did a really good job. We got a supporting actress. We doing that? Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay, all right. Supporting, I'll save, supporting I'll s- actor first. Though. All right, I'll save my... Supporting actor. Save my comment, then. Who we got here? Alan Ruck, Succession. 
Swing batter batter, all right? Alexander Skarsgård, the Northman, succession. F. Murray Abraham, he was great in this, White Lotus. Matthew McFadden, succession. Michael Imperioli, the White Lotus. Nicholas Braun, succession. Theo James, the White Lotus. And Will Sharp, the White Lotus. Is, who is Will Sharp? Is that Aubrey Plaza's guy? Who's, think, who's F. Murray Abraham? He's the grandfather. Oh, so it's just that family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. That's funny. I mean, uh, can I say something before we give our he's, he's good. Way too many people are nominated. you got to keep it to four or five like the Oscars. Why are you nominating so many people? I think they just want all these people to be there, you know? Completely but like, how are you agree. nominating? How many people from White Lotus? Uh, that's a good show. Uh, yeah, but it's just a lot. You know what? I'm giving it to uh, Imperioli. You're giving it to Imperioli? You know what I mean? That'd be cool. I, Will, I, Will Sharp is the Asian guy. Yeah. Bob 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 okay. I think all the guys in uh, White Lotus, I think they are all did a really good job. Yep. The grandfather might have been my favorite, but I it don't know was. if he was in it enough. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Imperioli, man, he was good. He just, he just, I don't know, man. No, he, he was good. I mean, just, all these people were great. If I had to cut people out of this, I'd probably cut Will Sharp out. I'd probably cut Alan Ruck out. He wasn't in it much this season. Even yeah, Skarsgård. So, I mean. Yeah, Skarsgård didn't, ha- he didn't have that much. He was just an evil. Nicholas Burson, too. Like, he re- barely did anything. This was this like season. the least. I'm, was I Greg? was shocked because going into yeah, this, Greg. we we both thought that Greg was going to have a bigger role because yeah. he's been having this buildup. And then he really doesn't have much to do this season mm-hmm. at all. Um, so I thought that that was interesting. I would cut him out. Alan be, Rock, probably the cool same. Alexander Skarsgård, same. Like, I can't believe yeah. it. But then what are you left with? You're just left with White Lotus. To me, it's Matthew McFadden. I, I, all day. Now, will long. they give it to Sarah Snook and him? I don't know. How crazy but would that be? I think he, I mean, he was unreal. He's yeah, one of my new favorite actors mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. Ever. He's so good. Michael Imperioli might be my number two, though. I was going to yeah, say. He was good. Yeah. Dude, yeah, this yeah, yeah. is like actually difficult, but I totally agree. It's because mm-hmm. there's not like... It, first of all, you don't have a, a bunch of different shows here. You got two mm-hmm. shows. Two Basically, shows yeah. and yeah. the entire supporting cast. Really? Yeah. Let me ask you this. If you are... um, What's what's the kid's name there? If you're Albie yeah. mm. from White Lotus, yeah, you get ah. how do you feel? Ah, yeah, not him. good. No, 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 no. I get it. But if yeah. you're him, if you are him, how do you feel? I, what about uh, Commodore? Over. Well, dude, you know what I'm. Th- Where's the king from House of the Dragon? Oh my god! Oh thank my you god. so the much king? for saying that, bro. Because I meant to bitch about it when we were on the yeah, first dude. fucking slide. You snubbed my favorite character king? from House of the Dragon. You fucks. Wait, I, I, there's I, no one from House of the Dragon in any of these. I Cook? can't fucking believe oh, how wait, much this, they got. I snubbed, wonder if bro. it's. A, I'm so pissed Where's about the it, king? RJ. Do you think it's a? Well, that, What's his name again? Well, I was going to say, do you think it, it it didn't fall into the timeline? But House of the Dragons nominated. That's ridiculous. It's I didn't ridiculous, even think about that. Yeah, the bro, king. That's They're crazy. They're not nominated for dick, Because bro. honestly, if Patty Constantine yeah, was nominated right. for this... I, Dude, he'd win. All day long. Probably him. All day Dude, long. I wouldn't that's even choose crazy. anybody else. He was awesome. Really? And I Wait, love success. On. Dude, I know. Look at you. you I mean, it's oh, serious. I to make sure they weren't nominated last year. Dude, Who put, gives a fuck if they were, dude? Put some respect on his no, name. because if they were nominated last year, they can't be nominated this year. Well, why would the show be no, nominated, dude, this but is not anything the anything that came out, right? This is any show that came out from May 31st of last year to June 1st of this year. Yeah, so it would fall under it. Yeah, it was in the fall. Exactly. Came out in the end of summer, fall. September. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, uh... Because they are nominated, RJ, this year. Yeah, they are nominated, the show. But the, I just uh... can't believe they didn't. Look, right there. They're House, nominated House this year. No, I know that, but I can't believe none of the actors got I, the That's what I'm, what I'm going crazy about, the king, bro. The king should have been nominated. Thank you, God, for saying that, Thank bro, because I totally forgot. Yeah, you're I, when I saw this you're slide, welcome. I was like, oh, I got stuff to bitch about, and then that's I totally crazy. slipped my mind. Yeah. You're welcome. Wow. That's bullshit. The I didn't king, even know no, that. No best actor, no best Him, actress. I think I agree with you, Olivia, Olivia Cook. Cook. And now, now when I look at Skarsgård on this list, what the fuck? You could have done who's Olivia Cook's father. Fucking, uh, uh, he could be Oh, too. yeah. Dude, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Smith. Nobody. Oh, that's, yeah. no, I'm, I'm no boycotting. That's that crazy. Bullshit. That's, that's wild. That's bullshit. crazy, bro. That's no good. That's fucking Jeez. crazy. That's what they should be striking. God, yeah. I know. That's, it's Jeez. insane. I can't, I just can't yeah, believe that. Yeah, what the that. hell? You Number got one two bullshit. shows here getting knocked. <laughs> Thank you. Number Final. one bullshit. Oh, my God. I was I, like, see, I didn't even realize I was like, this should feel more intense than it feels. Number one bullshit. Wow. Like, oh, my God, dude. It's just insane. Emma, Emma Darcy, all of them. Now, listen, listen, on the other side of this, right, I just want to back up for like one second mm-hmm. it's i'm not saying that 
any of these people don't necessarily deserve no. to be up here. Like, everybody is a fantastic actor, but that's such a snub, dude. Like, that's such a crack in the fucking side of the mm. head to me. Like, Nicholas Braun over Patty Constant. Come that's crazy. on, dude. That's, that's crazy. Come on. Fuck. What? Listen, I hated Otto Hightower. Why is great Otto actor. Hightower not up there, bro? Can I, yeah, can I ask great. you something? Of course, please. Do you think it's because they're not SAG? Are they not SAG members? No, because they're English but they actors. Can, they're, but they're allowed to no, join. No, I'm saying, do you think it's a... No. Like a, like a just a kind of discriminatory Because <laughs> Game of Thrones, they all won the awards. You know what I mean? Yeah. They and they are technically nominated. The show well, is technically yeah. nominated this year. And a bunch you know of yeah. those actors I don't know. were British and stuff. That's my... That's I, I, HBO... Or act, that they, I was going to say HBO's paying them off, but uh, HBO has House of the Dragon too. Well, it's all these are all yeah. HBO shows anyway. So this yeah. is this is what makes this like difficult mm. in general. Like you have these awards once a year, and, and not that you should have them any more often. Like don't get me wrong, we don't need more Emmys and more Oscars and no. all that other shit. But like you forget, you know. Like even now, like I would have to go back and watch White Lotus and be like, oh yeah, I love that part, you know. And I'd have to rewatch House of the Dragon and everything. But when you start really thinking about it, like, dude, I was. If, no, emotionally that's, that's invested crazy. in House of the Dragon. You take a series of, I'm just thinking, like, can we just talk about really quick, just for like one second, mm -hmm. can we just talk about the difficulty in the acting? Like, you changed over three time periods, multiple swaps in actors mm -hmm. in like nine episodes. Yes. Then you have a show like Rings of Power that blew ass, okay, mm -hmm. all over. It was horrible. And it had less or whatever episodes, amount of episodes and stuff. House of the Dragon was like perfectly yeah. executed mm -hmm. and, and, and acted by fucking eight-year-olds that were playing the young versions yeah. of people. I mean, they like literally across the board, no one gets a nomination. Fucking blow How's me. Matt Smith not on here? That's what I'm saying. Come on. I, I mean, Matthew McFadden, you keep Michael Imperioli, you keep F. Murray Abraham, Over maybe, and then you got to have Patty on there. That's yeah, crazy. Dude, that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm, well, yeah, I'm, I'm like fucking shocked. I'm fucking shocked. Terrible. Supporting actress. Now this is all. This is all screwed. Um, Aubrey Plaza, The White Lotus. Elizabeth Debicki. She played. Uh, she played. What's her name? Right. Nah. Uh, what's Queen, her name? Queen. Oh, the, the, Diana. Diana. Oh. Uh, J. Smith Cameron, Succession, Jennifer Coolidge, The White Lotus, mm. Megan Fahey, The White Lotus, Rhea Seahorn, Better Call yep. Saul, Sabrina Impacciatore, <laughs> The White Lotus, and Sabona Tabasco, The White Lotus. There you go, Matt. Okay, uh, uh, I already have my pick. Well, J. Smith Cameron is Jerry, right? I think it's Jerry. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, um, yes, yes. Oh, shit. Now I don't have my pick. Matt, who are you going? Well, listen, RJ. Uh, <laughs> You know, I've, I've, I know who you want to pick. Yeah, I want to pick Lucia. Yeah. I really do. Mm -hmm. I love Lucia. With, Lucia should win. But, you no, know, you know who should actually win is Rhea Seahorn. Is that how you say I it? I agree with you. Dude. Oh, you guys. Kim suck. Wexler yeah. is fucking awesome. Especially this last Dude, season. Dude, she's awesome. And this yeah. season might be her best season. Mm -hmm. Last season I saw. Yeah. I, I think you got to go her. But, dude, Lucia was awesome. How's Lalo not getting nominated? Dude, also, this, um, I mean, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Megan, Fa she played um Theo jo uh, James' wife, right? Yes, yeah, she's a good actor. She was very good right. in the show, dude. Olivia Cook, come on, you're, you're not bro, watching her on. and being like, come this on. is an amazing performance. Like she was good, she was yeah. fine. She played Olivia Cook. Come That's on, man. That's crazy. I mean, oh. yeah, that really puts this all into a different perspective now that you brought that House of the Dragon thing up, dude. Snubbed, crazy. bro. Snubbed. Now Jennifer That's Coolidge, insane. she won last year. This actually makes me think that they might win best overall drama, though, because that's the only thing that they're really nominated no, for. Well, I thought that maybe about Top Gun Maverick because it was. Oh, just, I see, and, and then, then we got win. fucked on that yeah. one too. Yeah, I don't know. Lucia, what do you? Who do you got? Uh, so I'm like, I'm pissed about the House of the Dragon. I am, I am in a little bit of a different situation than you guys, uh, mm -hmm. but I, but I am admittedly mm -hmm. absolutely love Lucia. Lucia yeah, okay. I can't go wrong. And I like Tabasco sauce too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sabrina and Pachatori did so very well as she well. She was great. I think all these most of these people deserve No, they're it. all great performances. I, I agree Hold Megan Faye. I, gotta, I don't I don't know. Hold on one second. Um, how great uh you know Yeah uh, that's crazy man. Yeah so Sabrina you know who Sabrina and Pachatori is right? She's she played the the desk the, she's the, oh, the manager. She's the hotel manager. Oh, yeah. she was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's she just made fun of that guy the whole time. Yeah. She's pro my favorite line. It's in a, it's in Sicilian, but mm -hmm. it's it's my favorite line in the whole she's thing so is when uh, 
<laughs> when the guy when she sends the guy out to the beach and then she sends yeah. him back and he goes yesterday the beach today the kitchen where am i gonna go? or no today uh the front desk where am i gonna go yeah. tomorrow she goes the kitchen washing dishes yeah bro i, I like she was probably my favorite character i was really emotionally connected to her storyline like i really yeah. like fell in love with this character and I, I would, I would love to see a fellow Italian win. Ah, oh, fellow Paisan, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. She, she was awesome. I would Any, love to too, see man. her win. I think she did a really fantastic job. Jennifer Coolidge, I'm, I, I, I'm snubbing here, but only because she won the Golden Globe. Mm. Like she won it for this, right? So like, to it. me, like I know you're not as big of a Better Call Saul fan, but Rhea Seahorn, dude, she I, was if awesome. she does not win this, like this is a perfect example she to carried. me of like just the credibility of these award shows, just not. Because they're probably going to give it to Jennifer Coolidge, because it's like it's Tanya. She died. She died. Spoilers. Like it's you know, like I, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. Dude, Kim Wexler, come on. I just think Better Call Saul really deserves it, but I don't know if I trust the Emmys to really push it. I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's so funny that we're like so intense about this. Rightfully so, I would say. But it's mm -hmm. just such an abnormal year because of these strikes. Like we don't even know if this is going to be worth it to watch. Yeah. But like. To make a note about House of the Dragon, go, though, go, go. It, it definitely, like, I don't know what the cutoff dates were, but that was definitely. I just told you, May 31st of last year to okay. June 1st oh, right. of so this year. So that was very much at the beginning of the, you know, so sometimes oh, true. because yeah, yeah. the award shows are so later, when it comes out at the beginning of the year, so it loses, was, so it was Saul, traction. though, right? Wasn't Saul at yeah, the same Saul time? Yeah, Saul, too, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Dude, I, yeah. House of the Dragon, maybe, you know what maybe they were thinking there? It's the last run for succession. We're going to give them no. a ton. You know what they were thinking? They weren't fucking thinking. Because yeah. it's yeah. bullshit. Because, well, dude, I, the king, Olivia Cook, the girl who played young Daenerys. Yeah. They, I'm sorry. They should all be up there. But uh, what I'm saying is <laughs> maybe Daenerys. they're like. It's number one bullshit. <laughs> maybe they're like, Uck. this was season one of Go House on of the Dragon. They're going to get their nominations later. Uh, F that, If man. they were thinking that F way. That. Do you know what I'm saying, Nick? Nominations for what though? It's it's Wait, over. You can't be nominated next year for the this king's year. dead. But I'm saying there's three more seasons of House <clears throat> of the Dragon. So the, I know this is why I was saying when we were talking about this king getting sick while we were reviewing House of the Dragon. Yeah, we said right? he should win. Yeah. No, no, no. But like, I, remember I said I go. Can you imagine you're an actor? You sign up for a role being mm -hmm. the king, and what a performance for like the three or four episodes yeah. that he's in, dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's never going to be in the show again. That's it's crazy. over. Number it's one very bullshit. Jerry Seinfeld of you. I know, but it's um, true. Yeah, it is true. Listen, I, I, I'll tell you, um, Sabrina's great. Uh, Raya Seahorn's like, watch I've, it. I've, I've, all right. All right. She better be like a completely different person in this last season because she just was kind of bland in uh, in the previous seasons, in my opinion. In my opinion, she's a little bland. I'll end you. And I'll make it look like a bloody <laughs> yeah. accident. Right. Cupcake and, and anything, you're uh, ugly. Just like your mom. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> great, movie. great movie. Um, I'll be plaza here, boy. But J oh, can we just talk about Jerry? J. Smith Jerry's Cameron? Great. I know, I I know you haven't watched yeah, Succession, but neighbor. like, she's great. She's always been really great. talented. Yeah. Very reliable. You're right. I think I don't personally, I I would not have nominated Jennifer Coolidge only because she won the Gold, oh, Golden Globe and I given think somebody she else. deserves to be nominated. I don't disagree, but I'm yeah. saying I won't give it to her, right? I think she arguably my, my, had more to do this season than she did the first season. I don't disagree, mm -hmm. but she's won awards for it already. And it mm -hmm. would just be cool to see another another woman with uh with a supporting role. Ties on. Do, but here's the thing. Do something right? like get an award, not, dude. Not to bring sports into it, but it's like cool. the MVP in the NBA. To popularity. Do you do you yeah, give it to LeBron. the person who's the best player in the league, yeah. or do you give it to the person who did well, think you think is the most valuable well, on a like, team? Well, it's like Michael Jordan and LeBron. Like they could win it every single right. year, right? You know what I mean. Right. But you give it to Giannis, or you get Embiid, right. who have an unbelievable season. They're deserving, but like, are they really better than LeBron or yeah. Michael Jordan? You know what I mean? They just they're the newest thing that was at that level. Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt was once upon a time in Hollywood his best performance to win an Oscar. No, I thought it was. They excellent. gave it to him because it was a legacy. The same thing happened with Julia, Julie Lee, uh, Curtis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Is this our Jamie, last Jamie Lee Curtis? Jamie Lee. Curtis, Is this our last sorry. Emmy uh, category? Ah, uh, there's one more. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'll wait. Yeah, more. yeah. It's, it's, it's then we got. Uh, I threw this in there because we watch a lot of these anthology series. So. Uh, limited or anthology series beef on Netflix. I've heard a lot about this this show. Yeah, I yeah. just watched I've heard a lot. this show. Okay, I've I heard just a lot. watched Save this it. show. Save oh it. my Let god! Let me get down the list. Dahmer Monster, uh, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Uh, Still hate that title. It's too long. Uh, Daisy Jones and the Six. Have not watched it. Heard things. Fleischman is in trouble. Have not heard of. Wild. 
Obi Wan Kenobi get nominated? Yeah. You're crazy. Listen, I, this th- is this, the Bob Iger slipped him a few twenties under the table. That's, <laughs> that's the only one I've seen. <laughs> yeah, that's the only one I've seen. I'll tell you what, that does not deserve yeah, any nominations. Hell? I mean, I mean, I mean, frankly, that's, that's that, frankly, it's a joke. Yeah. I mean, I don't think any. I don't think even if you ask Ewan McGregor, I don't. I don't. I don't think he'd say I de- <laughs> yeah. we deserve this one. Right. So. Uh, that's yeah, crazy. Th- you know what? Bullshit. <laughs> Again. Yeah. No good. Um. Uh, so I've only seen Obi Wan and Dahmer. I, I did not enjoy Dahmer. We've gone. You just over, don't like the dark. We've gone over let's this be before. It doesn't make. I'm talking about performance wise. Let's be honest. The performance of. Uh, uh, Evan Peters. Uh, Evan Peters is phenomenal. He'll probably win Best Actor. No I doubt. was I was gonna say we but, should probably pull. I'm sure. just gonna pull him so yeah, that we I have, have him right here too. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Beef though. I heard I've, good I've heard a lot of good things about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with name? that. The Asian guy, the main guy, Danny. Oh, Stephen Danny Young. Young. Okay, he yeah. from from Walking Dead. Walking Dead. She's great. Wow. He's great. Did you like the wow. show? I fucking okay, cool. loved. Maybe that I'll watch show. it. So good. And you spent time in L.A. when you were at Emerson, right? Yeah. A lot of Korean Americans out there. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's a big that's mm-hmm. a big population. Everybody thinks that there's a lot of like Mexicans in LA. Yeah. No, it's all Korean. Okay. Mm-hmm. All Koreans and Armenians and everything else. And they're they're great. Mm-hmm. They have great food too, to be honest with you. Korean barbecue. Little mm-hmm. Armenia. Yeah, that's yeah. Glendale, yeah. Mm-hmm. So no, but um the uh but this it was like realistic. Total I think it's like a full, almost almost entirely Asian cast, I would say. There's like mm-hmm. one white dude in this. Which it didn't actually mean anything to the story, I would say. Like, I, I don't think. Yeah, it really but maybe mattered. like the creator was. But a, yeah, yeah, no, no, exactly. Yeah. They, they were. Um, I don't know who they are exactly, mm-hmm. but like Japanese and Korean uh, Americans and um, dude, it was so good. Yeah, what a cool right, like check weird it out. Story. I didn't love the trailer, but I'll check it out. Oh no, no, I loved it. You have to get into it, but like right. I loved it. I thought it was really good. I'm shocked. Who do we know? Who the um? Can we just? We, I gotta pull these. Oh, nice. Guest actor in a drama series, Nick Offerman, Murray Bartlett. Dude, Murray. I'll it's give it to Murray. It. They got too many categories, too. There's a lot of shit here. Dude, I'll just say... Well, um, they got to fill up three hours of cable. Yeah, Everybody fair. else is on Netflix. Yeah. Before, well, speaking of what Netflix... You, yeah, you've been waiting to say yeah, something. Yeah, before... Uh, you know, it's not on the uh, categories we have here, but I just... Quick shout out. Wednesday got 12... I saw Jenna Ortega's story. Got 12 Emmy nominations. She, she didn't get nominated. That's kind Dude, of surprising. Wow. She, oh my God. I think they don't consider that a drama. I think it's a comedy or something. Oh, so Whatever she was nominated, I don't care. Whatever category Jenna Ortega is nominated for, she yeah. should win. Because she was, she was, I'm not like just saying this because I'm a oh, fan. Oh yeah, lead actress in comedy. Because I am. I don't think there was a scene in that show she wasn't in. Oh, yeah, like she, she really, was in 99.9, no she, yeah. every scene of the show and she was unbelievable she didn't blink she was that character yeah she was a living embodiment of wednesday adams and frankly if she doesn't win best lead actress in a comedy series this whole fucking show ought to, yeah. ought to be thrown away ought to be done with <laughs> it ought to be the last one because she was awesome and i'm uh you know sh- shout out uh wednesday and uh Tim Burton. Tim Burton. <laughs> I'm glad you got that out there, Matt. I've been waiting. I don't, to say I don't it. disagree. Me? This is fanta- in fantastic in the awesome. series. The series. Let's be honest here. Oh, I don't, I, listen, no, no. Come on. Hear me out. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I love when I love when you get like this. Hey, hey. He's so Kramer, bro. <laughs> Chill. Um, no, but like, uh, <laughs> let's be honest here. It's it's a it's a family show. Like sure. it's not it's not yeah, Succession. No, okay. No, it's a good time. It's, it's not good. White Lotus. Yeah. But there's like twists and turns. You good. follow around the, the people. Like this is like Listen, a decent fucking show. I'm a good. Tim Burton supporter. It's a good time. All right. Oh, same here. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm shocked that Matt was a Tim Burton supporter for this. Yeah. And thank if you. and if it takes Jenna Ortega to get you on the Tim Burton train, kid, that's, welcome oh, aboard. Right. That's all I gotta say. Toot to, toot, welcome aboard. I, all right. I know we're shitting on the Emmys a lot, but I think it's ah. when you're stupid, you're stupid. And <laughs> I like uh, that. <laughs> no, it's true. When, Listen, when you're right, you're right, RJ. <laughs> lead actor in a limited series or movie. Why so why are you combined? Though. So, like, limited or like anthology series is its own thing. But or then or the TV actors, movie. It's a movie. TV yeah. Movie. So, like, enough. you have Evan Peters nominated for Dahmer, but then you have Daniel Radcliffe nominated for Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Harry Potter. Because it was a Roku movie. Harry Potter. You think he's going to win? No. No. <laughs> no. You think he's going to win? No. No, it's probably going to be Evan Peters or Stephen Yoon. All right. Um, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, hold on. You have yeah, best actor. They do them opposite Shut that we have them. But one day, I think Evan Peters definitely takes that. Sure. I'm, I'm just yeah. I was. I hope that Evan Peters wins. He did. He did phenomenal. I mm. hope that um, Quicksilver. I hope that uh, I don't even know. Mm. Once George and Tammy haven't watched it. Swarm haven't watched it. Yeah, that was a movie. Once this, one already Emmys. 
Ali know. Wong. If Ali Wong wins, though, I'll be very happy. She was she's brilliant. She's gorgeous. And she did a great job in uh, in beef. I think you'll like that. If you haven't watched it yet, I think you'll actually really like it. And on to Emmys. Emmys Monday Se- September September eighteenth. All right, so we get some time before the strike. Maybe. Um. Yeah, you got some time before the strike. Hopefully. I might be working part of the Emmys. I got, I got an internship interview oh, wow. next week. Really? For where? Oh, yeah. Doing what? Just like a remote uh, pre, it's like a oh, pre Emmy show. God save the queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Doing with who? I what don't do you mean? It's very vague. It's, it's confidential. Awesome. Ah, come on, yeah. movie. No, wise. no, no. It actually didn't tell me. I don't know. Oh. A remote, what, but like doing what though? Like, what I, did you apply I, to it, do? It was confidential. What did you apply to do? Not who is oh, it with? It was something, it was like prep for. Uh, prep. Prep for the a pre primetime Emmy show, so it's probably the pre show. Oh, I'll save my time. I'm not gonna say. Well, I don't know what you mean prep. Like, pre-show. what are you gonna show? But what are you gonna be doing? I don't know. Pre-game. Are you on the show? Pre-game. You don't know what you applied no, for. No, it was confidential, bro. I it, get it when very you say vague. Conf- Right, but they didn't tell you. Okay, all see. right. Well, I hope see. we see naked RJ then on the Thank TV you. screen. Like, I don't get it. Like, what are we? You know, uh, pre gaming, pre gaming the Emmys. Uh, preparing our gift suite. You know, they give gifts to all the... Oh, oh you're like... A, okay, so you're like preparing for... A, you're like physically preparing oh, yeah, a room. Like, right, yeah. Okay. I thought it Yeah, was but like, it's like more asking like what they're looking for in a person than actual what you're doing. Uh, see what happens. So you applied. Oh, yeah. I have an interview next week. Okay, That's but you don't have the job yet. No, I'm just oh. saying. <laughs> I could be. Put me down as a yeah. reference, all right? Yeah. Not yeah, if more. you need extra help. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'll sing your praise. That's all right. Sorry, um, subscribe, please. <laughs> All right, just the only one making money here. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> well, it's no. an internship. I wouldn't be paid. Oh so, fuck yeah. me, dude. Yeah. Um, is it on the day of the Emmys? No, it's it's before. Oh, the it's Emmys. a pr- oh before Pre- I see. Okay, good. Well, because yeah. depending on this strike and and if it ends or not, if the strike is over, I'm doing a fucking live stream. Kid. Yeah, it yeah it's it ends when the Emmys happen. Um, limited or anthology series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these don't really matter. Should we should we get the Matt's trailer? Oh yes. What do we have to? Come on. Oh, do, I'll be quick. Oh, the Bear for best comedy series. Yeah, the Bear is nominated, win. and you just said but you Ted started Lasso's last, last season. Two, 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 two yeah, bad against so, one. Oh, and Barry. Barry's on there as well. Yeah, but I heard that wasn't good. Last I didn't season. like it, but yeah. I'm just saying it might be a popularity contest because I do like Bill Hader, even though I didn't like the last season of Barry. Maybe, maybe. Too bad maybe against one. Maybe go fuck yourself. Right. Love that line. Good line. Departed. Wahlberg. Yeah. Well, Matt. We'll talk more about the Emmys as it comes up. We still have a while. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> Matt, you texted me the other day. You mm. said, RJ, can we talk about the Drive Away Dolls yep. trailer? Now, this came out a few weeks ago. I had not heard anything about it, mm. though it is written and directed by Ethan Cohen and his wife. Um, I got to be honest with you, oh, Matt. There you go. I went in. I'm like, I I have an idea of what this is going to be. If Matt's very excited about it, it was not what I expected mm. at all. I, I'm I'm very curious to hear yeah. what you see in this trailer because yeah. apart from the Cohen, one of the Cohen mm. brothers doing this, I didn't see much. Oh, for me. Oh, okay. But w- w- well, listen, I was seeing Mission Impossible for the second time. Okay, and I know. Idea- listen, this is the movie that no one's talking about. For good reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> fucking movie sucks. Not like I'm going to see. You know, no one's okay. going to see this but me. But, you know. Are you going to go to the theater for this? <laughs> I, listen, I, I may stream it, you know, illegally. But, uh, no, the, isn't this a cute poster? Like, it was that witty. It was smart how I they did that, it. right? Yeah. Because it's, um, anyway. No, what really captivated me, uh. Oh, well, listen, I think it looks like a fun time. Was it a adven- poster? An adventure movie. Not the, I actually just saw this now. The girl in it, um. I don't. She's in Blockers and Miracle Workers. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce her name. I looked it up. Gerdelin something. Ger- Geraldine. Ger- there you go. She's awesome. No, I'm telling you, she's gonna be like one of the next like star. Like she's oh, great. Yeah, yeah. She looks familiar. Every, she's stole the show in Blockers. Um, she's great in Miracle. I think the she's other girl looks familiar. Too. One of the uh best up. She's in Once Upon a Time, right? Yeah, she was the one with the feet. The, her feet yep. on the dashboard. No, yeah. I think these are both two kind of like up and coming actors, mm-hmm. especially her. And uh, dude, I don't know. I just love her. Like she's awesome. Okay. So I'm really just seeing it for her. Could really be any movie. I don't really don't care what the movie's I mean, about. Matt, I'm rooting for you. But it looks no, it looks like a fun adventure. They <laughs> yeah, steal yeah. something. They're not supposed to have it. No, it's very. It's got the Cohen brothers. The guy from Euphoria yeah. is tracking them down. Pedro Pascal is going to be in it for like 20 Matt seconds. Damon. Matt Damon's Matt Damon, in it. Damon loves making random. Yeah, cameos. it'll be listen. It'll be a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You gotta All stay right. relevant, RJ. What do you think? I, I will say that I do like Beanie Feldstein, who plays the. Uh, Oh, the curvy, voluptuous cop. I will say, um, she's she's a a very funny, 
that style of humor I did like in the trailer, but I'm not going to watch this fucking Ah, movie, dude. Like, come on. You could, you could, though. I could. You could. I could do a lot. I could jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. You could. That means it's going to happen. You could. Sure. Uh, Never say never. Physically, I could do a lot of things. (laughs) Never say never. Uh, I've said that before to a lot of people. It's a good good bridge. It's a good convincing line. So, uh, yeah, no. um, (laughs) Good song. Good song. Don't knock it till you try it. You know what I mean? (laughs) I mean, Matt, listen. I hope this movie's good for you sake thank you but i hope you really like it bro this is definitely not on the top of my most anticipated no. list for this not year. at all Listen, no, no, uh, no. but give it six months and if we have nothing coming out because everything in the world sucks i yeah. mean you can only rewatch like go. so many times yep. amen all right so now it, it, it's mi time let's get into this mission impossible review matt before you guys get started i do have to ask matt a question was it possible oh well, we don't know all Listen, it's not over yet. It's part one. We don't know. <laughs> right, you know? We don't know. We don't know yet. TBD. Yep. Yep. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, part one, the seventh installment in the Mission Impossible franchise here, Matt. We had a chance, a, a great opportunity to see this film the other uh, few days ago. Yep. Matt was very excited. You said on the episode before mm. that even without seeing it, yep. you knew this movie was going to be awesome. Matt, did it live up to your expectations? Of course it did, RJ. Wow. I mean, how could it not? I mean, listen, you got... Tom Cruise, mm-hmm. what's the guy? Christopher McCurry, is that the director? Yeah, name? yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, they those two together yeah. cannot miss. Since they teamed up on uh, Rogue Nation, mm-hmm. every Mission Impossible movie. I think he wrote Top Gun Maverick, he did. too. He was yeah. in, he's involved. I looked at his uh, filmography the other day. He's involved in like pretty much any movie Tom Cruise has done yep. since like, Ghost Protocol. He's even on like wrote the screenplay, like, has producer credits. Mm-hmm. RJ, th- just to answer, yes, it lived up to the, my expectations and more. Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you, Matt. I mean, you know, I think the best part of these movies is Tom Cruise knows what people want, yes, and he delivers. Dude, and he, it's simple as that. He had the perfect quote because, um, you know, obviously it's a longer movie. Oh, I know. What you're and they say. film so much, and mm-hmm. like the actors were like, because I've watched like every interview since yep. the movie. Um, that's how I know I really like the movie or TV show if I go and watch all the press. Well, they you've do. seen it twice. I've seen it twice in two days. Yeah. I have. <laughs> um, a little expensive. But yeah, you know, you I you know, I don't have a lot going on right now, mm-hmm. so it's okay. Um, Tom Cruise says the movie will be as long as it is entertaining. Great line. Dude, come on, dude. I mean, who yeah. listen, you can tell Tom Cruise cares so much about the audience. He literally like the actors were telling him he was like, Okay, like they would do like a cool stunt or like an action mm-hmm. scene, which these movies are known for. And then he would say, Okay, but why? You know what I mean? And he would be like, does this engage the audience? Mm-hmm. And if it didn't engage the audience, we, we cut it out. Yeah. Why does this happen? No one cares more about, you know, the product, the quality of what they put out than mm-hmm. Tom Cruise, whether it's Mission Impossible or a Top Gun or his other projects. And, dude, as like a fan, as like a fan of movies, dude, so much respect for that. Yeah. You know? And I think like the stunts in this movie, oh. obviously we had two big ones. Come on. Uh, you had the... Obviously, the one that was in the marketing where he drives off uh, the cliff of the motorcycle. And, you know, we knew that was coming, but still, like, seeing him Mm. descending down, the camera on him as he's floating down, you see the air pressure just banging on his face. You know it's real. The guy's 61. He's doing all his own stunts. Right. It's it's incredible. And then you have the train sequence in which they literally constructed a train and they destroyed it. And what's crazy about that is it ups the stakes because you know they had one take to destroy that train. They're not going to build another yeah, train. No, they were talking about that on like yeah, a yeah, behind-the-scenes yeah. thing. They go, yeah, like if we don't get this take, like we're, we're fucked. Like right, and it. they were fighting on the moving train. It's crazy. I mean, but again, it, it, we, we were talking about last week about Indiana Jones and the value uh, of the production design, practical, the practical effects, practical. and they bring it. This definitely CGI there. But it, when you mix it in, you can't tell. You can't tell. I think no, no, that's no. the thing. And, and when you're questioning whether it's real or not, that's when you know you've done it right. Dude, they use all natural landscapes. Mm-hmm. It's all shot practical. Tom Cruise and a lot of the other actors, too, are doing their own stunts. Yeah. And you can tell because if, like, a stunt double, you know, does it, they go in there, you know, they do the stunt, then they're out. But mm-hmm. if Tom Cruise is doing it, he can kind of act, like, a little bit, say lines. Like, when he's skydiving yep. or when he, he's off the motorcycle hopping on the train. He's like he's like acting. He's saying lines. Oh, it's Benji. crazy! Like, you know how do you think about that? They wouldn't be able to do that if like a stunt double. You know no. what I mean? And like little things like that add to it so much. Um, I have a question for you. Sure. How do you think uh, Haley Atwell fit into this movie? I think she was great. I Matt. think she was the standout. But she I'd like to awesome. hear what you. Yeah, yeah, I think the female characters are always really Phenomenal. good in these movies. Um, obviously spoilers, guys. Spoilers. Uh, Elsa, 
We we've seen the last of her, unless she was wearing a mask. You never know. <laughs> but, uh, actually be I mean, Re- Rebecca Ferguson, she's on fire in these movies. She's in uh, Dune. Lady she's Jessica. great. Yeah, dude, she doesn't miss. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know if she's married, mm-hmm. but like, you know, uh, my application, you know, I'll send it she, right. She's away. putting I mean, it out there. I mean, dude, she's I don't know, dude, she's so cool. Yeah, and dude, her ca- I because I after this I rewatched uh three through six. Nice. The Mission Impossible's after seeing this movie twice mm-hmm. shows what I've going on lately. Um, but dude, she, Rogue Nation, dude, she's so cool. Yeah. And Rogue Nation, like she's literally- Is Rogue like, Nation the one where Jeremy Renner's in it? He's in uh, Ghost Protocol and Rogue Nation. What happened to him? Well, I guess oh, I read into it because okay. I was curious. And I guess for a fallout, Marvel needed him like on call. Oh, shit. For like Endgame. Needed him on call. Damn. And then I think in this one, uh, you know, he had the accident. Oh, I didn't even you think know? of that. So yeah. who knows? Because his character, good character, William yeah, 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 Brent. Yeah. Um, they got to bring him back. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, but dude, she's so good, dude. Mm-hmm. She steals that movie, and her death, like the whole time, uh, she really, dude, her death, like hit me hard. Yeah. Um, they did kind of gloss over it a little bit, like Ethan just kind of like right onto the next bad. Yeah, he's right on to Haley. Yeah. You know what? That's okay, dude. Haley Atwell for me, dude, kind of stole the show. Yeah. Because I, in more ways than one, because uh, I know what I know. Tom Cruise is going to deliver every time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's going to be running all over Europe, all over the globe. Rome, that Rome chase sequence, oh, unreal, phenomenal, dude. Haley Atwell, she was. I mean, I've only seen her as Peggy Carter, mm-hmm. which I thought she was good in, but you know, it's a limited role. It's more of a, yep, you know, to uh, Captain America there, dude. She was awesome in this movie, and dude, her like facial expression, like mm-hmm. all of it, dude. I thought she, because she probably is the second most screen time. Oh, she was, yeah, pretty heavy in this, and uh, dude, she, I mean, she, you know, I mean, listen, on and off the court, she's great. Th- this movie's ridiculous. But oh, it, kno- it knows what it is. Oh, very much um, so. You know, it's always been ridiculous. You had the masks and shit, and it's just that trope that mm. they do. A lot of ridiculousness. But mm. what did you think of the entity, Matt? Now, I, I didn't know who the villain was going to yeah. I knew that the... I forget his name, but he's in... Uh, Gabriel? Yeah, uh, Isai Morales. He's in he's Ozark. Great. He's a great villain in Ozark, and he was in this. Mm. Um, He's a villain that was someone that Tom Cruise, Ethan Hunt knew in the past. Yes. Now, I... It had been a while since I watched the original movies, so I assumed that he was in them, mm. but he wasn't from my that's memory. Not. So, listen, I'm not a huge fan of when they, like, throw out some guy that's never been seen before and say that he had a pass. But again, like, it's Mission Impossible. I'll let it slide. I thought he was good. What did you think of the AI entity thing? Well, that's my only thing, RJ. It's a little, um, yeah. I mean, listen, because I love this movie. If I did have one, I mean, it didn't take away, but if you say, Matt, one thing you didn't care for, it probably was like the big bad is like a fucking computer. Yeah. Like it's AI. Mm-hmm. I guess it's relevant to today. Oh, yeah. You know what definitely. I mean? Like that could, I mean, you know, theory, I, you know, whatever. But uh, so it's relevant to what's today. I don't like that the big bad, they got to stop a computer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Aside from that, though, um, Gabriel, whatever mm-hmm. his name is, dude, he was good. He was. Like he was. He's Thanos great. He plays a good villain. When he got the key. Yeah. Dude, that was Thanos. He's like, mm-hmm. I finally got it. Yep. And dude, he's cold blooded. Like, he even turned on, uh, what's her name? Palm from yeah, Mantis. Mantis. And I'll say quickly, she was great in this movie. You liked her? She was on Demon Time. Mm-hmm. She played that character perfectly, and I'll give it to her because she didn't have, she maybe had four lines yeah, yeah, yeah. in the entire movie. But, dude, her facial expressions when she was driving the car, like the SWAT yeah, team car. Like Harley Quinn, kind of. Dude, you, per, that's a perfect comparison. Mm-hmm. You could see it in her eyes. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like, she wanted blood. Mm-hmm. And, dude, I, I know, like, you didn't care, but, like, Dude, I thought it was a nice moment because it shows, both, you know, Ethan, like, he's not a killer. He yeah, spared yeah, yeah. her life, and in return, um, you know, she saved uh, his life and Grace's life. And yeah. I think this, th- these movies, as they've gone on, they have, they have heart behind them. No, they do. You know what yeah. I mean? Because Ethan, like, it's all, like, even in Fallout, he, uh, you know, he blew the mission to save Luther. Yeah, you know, it's about his friends. And that's yeah. why he's, re- you know, Grace, he goes, my, your life will always be more important than mine. Yeah. Like, it, there's a lot of heart uh, behind these. It's kind of about friendship and coming together. Like, Benji, the mm-hmm. entity knows his friends are most important to him. And uh, so I, I really, uh, I think it's an underrated aspect. Obviously, the stunts, the acting, Tom Cruise, but I think there's heart behind these. Well, that too. that's like the draw. But when you bring mm-hmm. in that friendship aspect yeah. and you ground it, that's how you like get people in mm. and they can see past the ridiculous aspect of it because it's kind of grounded with yeah. that stuff in the characters. Yeah. I think the characters are yeah. like underrated for like big action movies like this. Mm-hmm. A lot of time I think, you know, they get glossed over. Yeah. And I think, uh, in these movies specifically, they do a really good job of, you know, making you care about the characters. Like when Ilsa died, like dude, that, I mean, they gloss over a little bit, but it hit me because we've got to know her th- yeah. for three movies. And I'll say they do a great job of introducing new characters. They do like, um, 
What Paris? That's her yeah, name. Yeah, the movie yeah. Paris. Grace. Even uh, they weren't at the last movie. The uh, Rebecca Kirby might be her. Oh Vanessa yeah, Kirby. Vanessa Kirby. Dude, she was great. That club scene was sick. Yeah, and I she, love a good club scene, dude. And they just all like together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. two great mm-hmm. club scenes this year. John Wick and this. Dude, every time there's a cl- like the Iceberg Lounge and yeah, Batman, Batman. Every time there's a, I look at Christian and get a little. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, dude, it's it's awesome. Dude, she was great. Rebe- uh, oh yeah, limited she was time, great. but like she doesn't blink. Oh, Vanessa Kirby, and, yeah. And you just, you, they're all in the same. You're just wondering who's going to, like, move first. Yeah. For two, a two-hour and 43-minute movie. Glue by. Glue, glued the whole time. Yeah. I was never once bored. Mm-hmm. I, I totally agree. And listen, say what you want about Tom Cruise outside, ah, uh, you ah, know, personal life. What he does. Die. This guy has done nothing but help cinema and help Seriously. people go into the theaters. He Seriously. plays those little... 15 second messages before his movie. No, who else you does to that? Come. That's awesome. He cares so he much. He does care. You can't say that he doesn't care. You can't say that he doesn't give 110%. He does. And like you said, yeah, him and McCory are a great combo. They they want to continue the they theater are. experience and he, stuff. He's the bi- biggest advocate for the in theater movie blockbuster experience. 100%. I mean, look at that. The biggest movie last year was Top Gun. Yep. Everyone talking about it. And this year, I mean, Michigan, it hasn't been making as much money as no. they thought, but it's still doing good. I mean, it's still it's not going to be the top. one. You got Oppenheimer, you got a lot yeah. of other movies, but it'll top five. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. it'll be one of the biggest movies of the year, a hundred percent. You know, well, I think we're pretty spoiled in oh, terms of action movies currently, because if you think stretch. about what we we have, Mission Impossible and the John Wick franchises, which in my opinion have been just like. They know what they are. They do it amazingly. The production design, they up the ante every movie. Would you agree with that, that this and John Wick are Dude, on different levels? We're, we're, we're so spoiled. And yeah. I think what's cool about both of those franchises, because you love John Wick, mm-hmm. is both of those franchises are getting better as they go on. Yep. Usually it's the other way. Usually you start off like the first one's good, maybe the second one, and then after that you're like grasping for straws. Like even Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Everyone is getting better. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just ended, but like Bond was like on yeah. a great run. Yep. And, uh, dude, it's just, it's awesome. And, man, these actors, man, oh, there's just so much respect for them. Yeah. They do such so, great work. Great movie. I think we both enjoyed oh. it. I think you liked it a little bit more than me. Well, I'm I, just a, I'm just a mission, imp- I'm, I'm an MI yeah, know, F fan. I know? love it. I love it. But you did rewatch a lot of them recently. Oh, I watched, So, yeah. let's, let's hear, uh, what are your favorites? Okay. Wait, what's your top three? Oh, because nice. for me, uh, Fallout's still my favorite, I think. Good I movie, think the Cavill, the, the jumping out of the plane sequence. How can you not? Yeah. I mean, come on, dude. The, the pump and the, the fist. Dude, that, you know what that movie is? Yeah. It's fucking sick. Yeah. I mean, come on, dude. That's just fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't like Fallout? And I like Solomon Lane Superman? as the villain, too. No, I agree with you. Number one, Fallout. Okay. Number two, Dead Reckoning. Wow. Part one. Mm-hmm. Num- now, number three, because I rewatched them all because, yep. you know, sad life. Um, I'm going to go Rogue Nation. I agree with you. Underrated. Yep. Dude, that's a good movie. The mm-hmm. only thing about that movie, and it's not really a detriment, it's just a credit to these ones. Yep. I feel like both of these um, endings were a little bit more climactic. You know, yeah, how they yeah, kind yeah. of, like, the, dude, the helicopter chase with Henry. Mm-hmm. I mean, that yeah. was, and the villain, Solomon Lane, I think he was probably the best villain. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'd be my top, what's your top three? That'd be mine. I, I'd go Fallout, maybe, Ghost I, see, I need to rewatch them. But just off, I'd go Rogue Nation 2, this 3, okay. Ghost Protocol. I actually do three? enjoy Mission Impossible 3. I like 3. Yeah, J.J. Abrams directed that, I think. Because you that know who be the makes most that gruesome. movie is Philip Seymour Hoffman's an amazing villain. Dude, he might be the best. You could say Solomon Lane. He might be the best villain. Yeah. And he's definitely, Um, I mean, dude, that movie is definitely like kind of the most fucked up. Oh yeah, like, definitely. I, I forget her name, but um, Russell, Carrie Russell, maybe her name. Oh no, um, what they do to uh, her and Michelle like, Monaghan. Okay. His, yeah. No. Yeah. His girl. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. Holds her hostage. Um, yeah. And that's. I think that's kind of one. It start because dude, two was not great. I, two. Two has some aesthetically pleasing yeah. things. Uh, like Thandie Newton's great. Mm. The like the uh, climbing scene on the building is great. Yeah. Uh, but the first one's kind of just like. Very 90s. Yeah, it's a fine movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're right. It is very 90s. The second one is kind of cheesy. I guess it's, like, relevant for the time. Mm-hmm. I feel like three was, like, all right. And then four, I feel like Ghost Protocol really was, like, all right, we're going to keep up in it. Like, yeah. Like, I remember the promotion for Ghost Protocol, and I remember, like, every, a lot of people were talking about that. And yeah, that's yeah. kind of when it kind of Fall, Fallout is really what hooked us, I think. Right? Dude, I never watched a second of Mission Impossible. Mm-hmm. I'd heard of it, never cared to watch a second we were in, I, I don't know what we were watching, Spider-Man, whatever. Yeah. I saw that Fallout trailer. You can't fight the friction, Matt. I said, dude, that movie's going to be fucking sick. Yeah. We're going. Mm-hmm. And we went with Michael Krizmeyer. Yep. Shout out Krizmeyer. 
rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> You're alive and well. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, it was a great movie. So. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Matt, I, I don't think it's even a question. It's your favorite movie of the year so far. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, number one. Well, guys, thanks for watching that review. We're going to re- be reviewing Oppenheimer next week. The big, big review of Oppenheimer. The so great improviser. The big, <laughs> but this you can't do in your head. Yeah. And that's all right, guys. But we're going to be talking about that next week. Uh, but Mission Impossible, guys, go out and see it. Support the theaters. Support Tom Cruise. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode of the Movie Mob Podcast here. Uh, a great episode, a lot of topics, a lot of good discussion, as always. Um, guys, Movie Mob Podcast drops Friday, 6 p.m. every week. We'll be here watching it. Comment. Let us know what you thought of all this stuff. we got a lot to talk about. Uh, ask us questions. We'll answer it next week. We love the questions. Like, subscribe. It really helps out the channel, guys. Thank you for the support. We appreciate you. Yep. God Amen. Bless. But uh, we'll be back next week, guys. In the meantime, go see Oppenheimer. Go see Barbie. Support the theaters. Go see Mission Impossible. Yep. Get after it, guys. How you doing?